<laughs> Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Our city's building boom could be coming with some steep costs, namely an increase in construction-related injuries, some of them fatal. Just this month, of course, a massive crane collapsed in lower Manhattan, killing one man and injuring three others. My next guest is a longtime supporter of stricter regulations for city construction sites. He's also very involved in the, the debate over the mayor's attempts to rewrite the zoning code to increase affordable housing, which he's going to be voting on along with the rest of the council in something like 10 days from now. We welcome City Council Member Ben Kalos, who represents Manhattan's Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island. He also serves as chair of the Council's Committee on Governmental Operations. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, Errol, and thank you for your viewers joining us tonight. Um, I, I, I imagine that some of this uh, you have inherited from your predecessor. I mean, cranes have fallen from the sky uh, for years, and many of these tragedies happened in the district that you now represent. That's correct. So in 2008 and 2007, I was actually chief of staff in the assembly, and now I represent the uh, district where we had two crane collapses. And following that, we passed some of the toughest rules and regulations in the country. And as the last administration came out, they put forward a rule to have New York use a national standard. So somebody from another city or town would be able to come here and operate a crane on a 40-hour course. And that concerns me. So I introduced legislation, Introduction 299, which says we have to have a local exam and we have to have local experience because this is a city like none other. We have almost 6,000 High rises. The next closest city is Chicago with 1,125. And I don't want somebody with experience in Illinois trying to do work here. I want somebody who is a New Yorker and who can keep us safe. And so when I'm walking down the street or any New Yorker is walking down the street and they see a crane, they need to know that that person has experience and knows the local rules. And uh, just I mean, this, to, this yeah. is mostly preventative and almost sort of prophylactic, right? I mean, the problems that we've had were not because there were out-of-state operators, right? So what we actually had in this last instance, and uh, you're, you're right, the rule hasn't changed. So they've made the rules, uh, and they'd like to roll them back. There's been a lawsuit, and the courts, God bless them, have said, you know what, we still need a local standard, and they've, it's currently being appealed. Mm -hmm. But uh, what everyone has said around the last accident that happened earlier this month is that if the person hadn't had so much experience in New York City, they wouldn't have known to get it down in the street bed instead of on a building where it could have injured so many more people than already did. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, you um, have also been looking at some other elements of, well, your district is going to be affected by affordable housing. And you, like many other council members, have weighed in on the affordable housing plan, the combination of the mandatory inclusionary housing uh, zoning as well as the, um, the, the, the zoning for affordability that the mayor has been pushing forward. You have some problems with it. What are those problems? Sure. I think my, my first problem is that the plan that came to the city council did not reflect the expertise and feedback from our community boards and our borough presidents. So now we're starting from the ground up. And what we're looking for, especially in my district, is deeper affordability, more low-income affordability, not just affordability for people who make $38,000 for a family of three, and also broader affordability so that it's not just a, a tale of two cities with low-income people making 38000 and then other people making a quarter million. We need a city for all New Yorkers with uh, different bands for everybody, and we need affordable housing in Manhattan. And uh, that is a part of it. In fact, I've even put forward and supported a zoning change in my district that would bring mandatory inclusionary housing to the East 50s and a 260-foot height cap. I mean, but isn't, isn't the whole premise of the thing that where there's um, low-cost land and other development opportunities that you should uh, go there, East New York being a primary example that the mayor has cited, in order to maximize the number of affordable units, right? I mean, it, it, it might be nice to have it in your district, and, you know, God bless you for wanting it, but... Uh, won't the numbers mean that there will be, by definition, very few units? It's actually the inverse in hot markets. Uh, they did a feasibility study and they showed that they could actually get more affordable housing because the units in my district are going for four or $5,000 a month. And uh, when people are paying that, you have a lot more profit that you can use to pay for affordable housing. Uh, one other thing that I have to mention is uh, 
ProPublica found that there were 200,000 units of affordable housing that aren't being registered. And I've introduced legislation that would require landlords in New York City to register with HPD in the city and have a fine structure, which we haven't seen since 1993, and allow individuals to bring actions in court so that they can get access to that affordable housing. Well, yeah, let, I mean, let's dial that back for a minute. The, the registration that one has to do as a landlord with um, the, the Department of Housing, uh, the State Department, is, is intended to let public officials just have a general sense of how much is being charged for different units, in part to make sure that people are not um, busting their legal limits, right? I mean, is that the general idea? Absolutely. In fact, we're giving billions of dollars in tax incentives and subsidies to developers who say that they're going to give affordable housing, but at least 200,000 units worth aren't registering with the state. And so the idea is, let's get them registered, let's get them in a place where people can apply, and we're actually having a hearing on this on uh, Monday at 10 a.m., come by City Hall. And you want to find them $2,000 uh, for every unit that they don't register, you are not going to be getting a Christmas card from Rebney, the real estate board. I don't accept campaign contributions from them. Okay, good, good for you, <laughs> just as well. Um, and I guess finally, in our last minute, you are planning to meet 168,000 people in your district. You want to meet every single person. I want to meet every single one of them, I work for them. Uh, and so what we do is first Friday of every month, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., come meet with me, talk with me, tell me what's important, and I'll even make a house call. I'll come to you, get 10 neighbors together. I want to meet every single person, address every single one of their needs. Uh, I have a program called Automatic Benefits where I actually want to just get people the benefits they need without them even having to apply. Just file your taxes, get your benefits. I want government to just work uh, like a light switch I want it to have no wrong door, and I want it to be better than Google or Amazon. Okay. Well, yeah, you and I have talked about some of the productivity stuff you do in your office. I figure there might be an app for that. We'll have to talk about that another time, though. Uh, thanks so much for coming by. Thank you for having me. All right. We're going to take a short break now. I'll be back in a minute with a preview of tomorrow night's show. Stay with us.